going on? Uh, Evan Alexander, here we are at uh, Coin Laundry on East Alameda. I just came back from uh, Homeland, procured an avocado, a couple of pears, a couple of apples, a few apples, some peppers. Um, look at this. That is a huge, huge apple. Um, no doubt, the product of genetic modification and all types of incredible human achievement. <coughs> uh, but for what? Uh, so, got some laundry going on here. Just got them done. Uh, timing worked out really well. Also got some pricing for some uh, some lumber, or not lumber, some firewood. Twelve bucks, and the lows are so big, I don't think I could even get it in the crate of my uh, my bike. But if we had two people, I think we could do it maybe. Uh, I'm gonna use the dryer. This works one quarter for eight minutes, and I've got two loads here. So I'm gonna go ahead and separate these and see if. Um, I can get away with using only 50 cents for each of these, but I bet it'll probably take uh, 50 cents per load. So let's kind of even these out. I could put it all in the same one, but this is the cool thing about timing. You know, this is another thing. I can probably get this closer. It's just that the likelihood of me dropping anything is lessened. I'll put that there. Come on over to this one, close her up, come over to this one, dun dun dun, dun. get these babies up in here, this is, now these, these all feel pretty thick, honestly, so I'm going to go ahead and put this over here just because it feels less dense, that's probably not a bad idea to kind of just shake these things out a little bit and loosen them up, yeah, this is just thick stuff, you know, sweaters, Thermals, some neon, remember North shirt. Yeah. All right, so here it goes. Um, pull out the watch, the watch timer, and uh, drop a couple, a couple quarters in here, which I just got some change for. So one quarter there, one quarter there. Um, I don't know what are we doing. I'd say. Medium. There we go. High star. Let's see what they do. <laughs> I got to go. This is a trip. Um, but let it be known that uh, Evan Alexander Dunn of Norman discovered how to live. I took the bus here. I'm reading. These are shop was work. I mean. We're talking about some incredibly transcendent ideas that have emanated from a human being who's been persecuted. There's something about persecution that catalyzes a unique, uh, critical mind. And um, his criticisms of contemporary modern China um, are scathing, scathing. And um, if one were to view them from the perspective of uh, a member of China's ruling elite, or one of those within the system who has very moneyed interests, uh, you understand why they want to suppress these ideas. You know, there is so much fervor, there is so much of a desire in China for intellectual pursuit, intellectual development, um, that these types of ideas would just be <sighs> gobbled up. Now here in the U.S., the dissidents such as Chris Hedges, Noam Chomsky, Chris Hitchens. Uh, David Foster Wallace, Marilyn Robinson, Sarah Vowell. Um, these thinkers are, they're, they're a part of the culture, but they have just this small sliver of influence. And writers like this in repressive societies, um, they have an increasingly powerful influence. And um, I'll, I'll read a little bit. He says, um, the glorious dream of overnight riches in the new China has come to include a thirst for sex that happens night after night, when lust, long suppressed during the Mao years, is suddenly released, it looks everywhere for action, keeping mistresses, whoring, what have you. The joys of adultery and the screams from the bed are then packaged as cultural products. Countless soap operas and blockbuster movies feed on the flesh explosion that is happening everywhere. Literature has entered the era of writing the body, 
first came the pretty girl writers who sold accounts of their personal sexual adventures, and then came the pretty boy writers who did the same. Next we saw the erotics of the white collar bar, followed by the confessions of prostitutes, followed by straightforward records of fact known as diaries from the waist down. Next, a woman who claimed to hold the M.A. degree posted nude photographs of herself on the Internet. Sex literature has boomed on the Internet and has deteriorated into bald expression of sexual appetite and fleshy encounter. No wisp of shame is visible. So this is very much about you know, the over-sexification of contemporary culture. Now, he's talking about something else here. Now, he moves to talk about Confucius later on in another essay. This is yesterday's stray dog becomes today's guard dog. The fate of Confucius's reputation in the 20th century would likely have puzzled Confucius. Twice he was made the target of major political campaigns, once during the May 4th movement that began in 1919, and once when Mao Zedong launched a campaign to criticize Lin Biao and Confucius in 1974. In the years since Tiananmen, a trend of Chinese intellectual circles has opposed radicalism, and some people have lumped the radical anti-traditionalism of May 4th and the radical anti-traditionalism of Mao together, rejecting the two as a package. But these two anti-Confucius campaigns were radically different things. First, the prime movers of the two campaigns could not have been more different. May 4th was a spontaneous, bottom-up movement by people who were making demands on the government. They were mainly independent intellectuals who had been influenced by new ideas, values, and strategies from the West, and were using Western yardsticks to try to understand why China had fallen so far behind. They had transcended the thinking of the late 19th century, which held that, quote, catching up was merely a matter of technology, or perhaps of government form, and had con concluded that the problem was deeply involved with culture. Confucius needed to be uprooted. In sharp contrast, the 1974 campaign to criticize Lin Biao and Confucius was a top-down political movement launched by a dictator, Mao Zedong, who held absolute political power and who had ensconced Mao Zedong thought in the sole position of honor in China's world of ideology. No other ideas, whether from China or elsewhere, were permitted. 